Charlie Chaplin was one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. As a director, he was instrumental in making motion pictures an art form. As an actor, his fame rests in the capable hands of his trademark character, the Little Tramp. Dressed in a shabby black suit and off-balance bowler, the Tramp is a child of the silent cinema. Carrying a cane with a duck-footed walk and a feisty attitude, he has engaged audiences worldwide for more than 90 years with his commentary on the human condition. Evoking laughter one moment and pathos the next, he appeals to our essential humanity. His spirit is undiminished by the passing of the years. His presence remains as compelling today as it was when he first appeared in 1914. Even after the advent of talking pictures, the tramp chose to remain silent on screen, relying instead on the universal language of mime. How does this unkempt character speak so eloquently without uttering a word? Throughout history, sympathetic characters like the Little Tramp have been developed to give voice to those who have no say in the forces that mold their daily lives. These characters offer the tantalizing delight of lampooning those who society considers their betters. In medieval Italy, the Commedia dell'arte created the cowardly buffoon known as Pulcinella to satirize the establishment. He in turn influenced the French marionette plays known as Guignol. Dutch puppet Jan Klaassen and Britain's Punch continued the tradition of outspoken social commentators who dared to challenge those in control. The famous Mexican clown Cantinflas played a similar role, using humor to deflect the dull pain of poverty and to articulate concerns which the common man could not or dared not address. Chaplin held his harmless-looking tramp in high regard. I remain just one thing and one thing only, said the comic, and that is a clown. It places me on a far higher plane than any politician. The little tramp does do his best to face life's daily struggles. He has nothing but his own luck to help him along, but his resignation is peppered with rebellion. He stands up to authority against all odds, unable to vanquish the symbols of power he uses his wit to level the playing field. Often, at least in his own mind, he comes out ahead. If the little tramp is every man, he is also in many ways Chaplin himself. To truly laugh, you must be able to take your pain and play with it. These are the words of a man who was raised in poverty in London, no stranger to hard times and tragedy. His father was a music hall singer who abandoned the family when Chaplin was six and died when he was twelve. His mother suffered from a mental illness and was hospitalized repeatedly, beginning when Chaplin was only seven. During these episodes, the young Charles was consigned to the rough life of a London workhouse. Perhaps as a result of his childhood traumas, his adult relationships were tumultuous. His creative expression was his greatest solace. Chaplin spent his adolescence in vaudeville, where he was exposed to a range of talents and styles. Physical comedy was a crucial skill in a profession where catching and holding the attention of an audience was a basic requirement, and Chaplin learned his lesson well. As a teenager, he made two tours of the United States vaudeville circuit, rubbing shoulders with young entertainers like Stan Laurel, a lad only a year his junior who would go on to team with Oliver Hardy and make his own mark in filmed entertainment. Chaplin's genius lay in his ability to distill a range of emotions into a few simple gestures and expressions. The little tramp addressed issues that statesmen were afraid to tackle. He shed light on the political and social challenges of the day. Militarism, industrialization, and the growing poverty in human slums, and framed them in terms of peace, social justice, and personal dignity. When Queen Elizabeth knighted Charlie Chaplin in 1975, she acknowledged the power that the humblest among us has, if we are willing to shine the light of compassion on our fellow man and celebrate the shared nature of our human experience.